Hi, this is Shadi and today we're discussing the natural evolution of all martial arts. Now, uh, I've talked about sumo, uh, its history and also comparing it to judo techniques and really analyzing their different approach, but the evolution from sumo to jujitsu to judo is incredibly fascinating and it is a topic of its own because uh, we often talk about the evolution of martial arts but it is in the context of technique and competition high level uh, we talk about how this revolution of leg locks is taking place uh, the wrestling in jiu-jitsu in judo we talk about you know how it's become so much refined and sophisticated in terms of grip fighting the throwing limiting to only upper body really crafted some of the most aesthetic and hardest to pull ever throws um, very similar to greco roman with their uh, monumental throws of like higher amplitude compared to freestyle wrestling so but we need to understand that the evolution of a martial art it's not just on the technical level or the technical aspect but rather it is also on the social political and geographical geographical uh, aspect as well um, and in this video i'm gonna explain this very thoroughly through the incredible story of how we went from basically a naked form of grappling and wrestling that is com considered a bit primal when compared to something as sophisticated as judo with his it's crafted stand up and also a ground technique so uh, i'm gonna go through the history of sumo very quickly in order to uh, explain this so uh, when it comes to sumo you see it was first the, the early origins were in the 1600s um, with the murals etc but in the, in terms of writings there is uh, sumo matches that dates back to 23 BC in some form of folklore and religious uh, tales so to speak but the first ever registered uh, sumo match was actually in the 642 in the court of the Empress uh, Kogyoku so it was a match that was made for entertainment uh, it was a match that was made to entertain particularly the Korean legation and also uh, later on it was only for the court and it took on ceremonial and religious uh, characteristics and it was only like I said secluded for the high society that would watch these matches kind of like uh, in the west the jesters the court uh, the jester that would be in the king's palace uh, it was a bit similar to this the fights would go on to the death actually so it wasn't like today either you touch the ground and it's finished also there was no ring because there was no masses that were watching there was no mawashi or the very thick belt uh, it was a bit uh of more primal type of naked wrestling also striking was involved now there is like a form of shoving which is like the kumikata in judo so uh, i've talked about this in my uh, judo versus sumo video so uh, later on it started to creep down to the masses at first during the japanese middle ages we are talking around the 1100 to 1600 um, during the kamakura period the sumo uh, art was uh, became the military training system for the samurai now whenever we say sam samurai we think of jujitsu and kenjutsu we would often say uh, judo is the art of the samurai he's a samurai when we're talking about you know reference to jujitsu this is what the samurais learned but before that it was actually sumo and later on during the uh, muro machi period sumo uh, became widely available to the masses it had no longer any interest in the court and it became a sport or a practice for the masses but it took on its uh, religious uh, activities from the days of the court so uh, the sumo tories or sumo wrestlers were funded by the daimyos for those of you who don't know you have the shogun which is like the uh, military war or the warlord after that the daimyo the feudal lord and down you have the samurai so the daimyos would fund these wrestlers and if someone wins they would give them uh, a lot of money 
and the samurai status so uh, before it was only for the court later on it became only for the samurais but later on it became for the masses and through it you could become a samurai um, so this is what basically uh, it started to become even more and more available so how did we go from something that was basically naked form of grappling to something with clothing uh, the gi and you know with far more sophisticated techniques like joint locks and far more studied throws you see jujitsu was uh, present throughout this entire period but it was not as famous as sumo because it was overshadowed by sumo uh, the earliest evidence of jujitsu was in the nara period so the 700s uh, it has a little bit of uh, joint locks some sumo and some tegoi as well um, but what happened that sumo took the back seat and jujitsu became the prominent art you see in the edo period uh, uh, things were starting to get out of control uh, there was inner peace in uh, japan however uh, street fights were common brawls were common and the art that was used to resolve these brawls was actually sumo and it was causing a lot of chaos so uh, it was strictly reserved to be practiced or trained uh, on uh, temple territories or temple properties shinto shrines and they would hold charity events only on the property of these shinto shrines so it became secluded once again which paved the way for a hidden art like jujitsu to become more prosperous and more available uh, to the masses and also the samurai and they would hold these competitions randori specifically with the uh, more safe rules for example all these eye gouging you know uh, grabbing uh, you know the crotch and squeezing it all that stuff it didn't come with judo but it actually came from the edo period since there was a lot of peace and basically this is how we switched from this uh, more of naked grappling to uh, jiu-jitsu basically so when people say that uh, uh, judo removed the eye gouges and all these uh, very dangerous techniques it is true to some extent they removed neck cranks and wrist locks but everything that's extreme like stuff that would kill um, or very gore like was actually banned way before that so much so that uh, the armor makers were doing it as a form of artisanal art to be decorated inside the homes and not to go to war basically so that's how we shifted from judo to jujitsu but the shift from jujitsu to judo was not actually a technical revolution it's not about those challenges uh that we talk about that were uh, later on discovered that were folklore basically uh, the the revolution from judo to jiu-jitsu actually happened on a political and intellectual and social level you see um, the same thing was happening with jiu-jitsu after the meiji restoration uh, it was becoming an art that people were disassociating themselves with because they wanted to compete with the west they wanted something more evolved so on and so forth hence uh, or hence comes in uh, Jigoro Kano with his uh, intellectuality and being such an academic that he uh, reformed jujitsu into this art that was completely systemized uh, branching systems like Nagewaza, Shimewaza, uh, Katamewaza that branches into these Newaza techniques and thus it became uh, what we now call judo. Now it did have some challenges to prove itself him being a founder of a school but it was mainly a more transitional uh, revolution from jiu-jitsu to judo uh, that made uh, judo what it is today but that was not the end of the evolution you see uh, the diaspora happened uh, from uh, transitioning from the 19th to the 20th century i talk about a lot of these masters that traveled to the west like satake uh, koizomi uh, uyenishi yukiotani uh, and many others so uh, the re evolution did not stop only there because even when we transitioned from judo to jujitsu 
it was still only reserved for, for the nobility, people that would have either a close ties with Kano or uh, like a very wealthy family. So, but it wasn't until, so first it was only secluded to a, a special people or very high, nobility people. Then later on it traveled to the West, but it remained for the nobility. Later on in the 50s, after Jigoro Kano's death, that it became widely available to the masses. So uh, it kept on evolving from a social and class standpoint, not just the technical uh, and straying away from jujitsu. Jujitsu, same thing. Uh, it was like for the like the masses or the samurai class, the highly trained people. Later on, it became available to the masses. And then the math masses became thugs on the street, very similar to the early Edo period where people were using sumos and having brawls. Uh, and then later on, it had it ac academic and uh, social reform. And then later on, the economical reform where it became available to the masses worldwide. Uh, and eventually, same thing with Jiu-Jitsu, uh, I mean BJJ. It started with the Gracie family, very wealthy family that took it before the 50s, before it became available to the masses. And then it, uh, you see that only the rich or people of light skin would go and train with the Gracies. You only had a, uh, like, how do you say, uh, a, like a split in the rule that was like the Fadda family that would train people, even if they were poor, they would train them in public, in gardens, on the beach, like an exception, basically. Uh, but then, so the the poor were basically training either with Fadda lineage or uh, Luta Livre, but then later on it became available to the masses. So BJJ was simply repeating the old cycle of, oh, uh, Neiwaza is best for competition, then let's use it and really uh, take our discipline this way. Uh, it was only for the rich, then later on became more to the masses. So it just repeated a cycle. Their story is nothing new as history showed. Uh, now, there is a few exceptions. Also Aikido, same thing, it was only to, uh, through special invitation and you'd have to be this high level martial artist. Later on, it became uh, widely available to the masses. So the evolution of martial arts is not just through technique. Uh, now we still have one big uh, exception and hopefully it, it follows through the same narratives as the others and that is Kosen Judo. Kosen Judo, is, uh, before it was uh, only for the high technology schools, later on the seven universities, uh, and it still is from the 50s till this day, and hopefully it becomes, uh, you know, more available because a lot of people are paying more attention to it. Uh, there is Nagewaza, but sufficient, not as much as like Tenri or Tokai or the Judo you see in the West, but it is heavily on Neiwaza. Hopefully it follows that route as well. There's a lot of Kosen Judokas now that are looking to preserve the history and making it more uh, available. Luckily, things are changing. People are talking more about it. Uh, I'm happy to be a part of those people who talk about it so openly and making it more available history-wise and information-wise. So uh, this is how we went from sumo, such a primal form of grappling, into the sophisticated arts that are judo, BJJ, and a part of judo which is the Kosen, a part reserved sadly only to seven universities. So if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. Also consider supporting me on Patreon. I have uh, exclusive content for the patrons only. So like I said, if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.